Hey, <laughs> it's Ed here. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys an update on what's been going on with me. Um, you might remember maybe about a month ago, I put out a, a message on Instagram saying that um, I got a new camera, a new laptop. I'm still learning how to use <laughs> use the new technology. Um, I never thought I'd be uh, one of those guys that needs help learning the new technology that those young kids know how to use, those new fangled technology stuff. Oh, man. But apparently I'm one of those guys um, now. So I'm learning how to do that so I can make even cooler recipes and videos for you guys. So bear with me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Love you guys for that. Um, but I wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind for a while and give you another reason as to why I haven't been making um, videos as often as I used to. Um, what I'm going to talk about next is uh, a mature topic. Um, I know there are a lot of young kids and, and uh, my show is family friendly. Um, but I just want to uh, kind of give a heads up. What I'm going to talk about is is kind of heavy. Um, but it is something that needs, a conversation that needs to be had. Um, so I want to kind of just let you know if you're watching with a little one expecting me to make awesome food and subpar jokes. This video is in that. But I would still appreciate it if you could to watch the video. Um, so about a year ago, I was um, diagnosed with a severe case of depression. Um, and where that stems from is over the past 12 years, I've had six major back surgeries. Um, um, and I've done my best to get through them, um, not just not just find a way around the obstacle that is my back, but try to get through it, literally try to get through it. Um, and uh, but unfortunately, my back my back issue has been the bane of my existence <laughs> over these last couple of years. Um, they, it, it, it's, it's prevented me from doing a lot of the things that I love. Um, I grew up playing sports, um, basketball, baseball, football, foosball, um, everything um, I've played. Because of my back, I can't. I physically can't. I can't run. Um, it's, uh, um, it's very difficult for me to bend um, just uh, things... Things normal people do um, are very difficult for me. Um, brushing your teeth is very difficult. Cooking is extremely difficult, but um, I, I do the best I can. Um, not a lot of you know this, but filming an episode of Edible Ed is very difficult for me. Because um, I do do 95% of it by myself while I'm taking care of Emma. Um it's hard. I'm, I'm, I'm physically exhausted, like beyond exhausted when I finish uh, filming an episode. And then I still have to edit it and all that good stuff. Um, so it, each, each episode is, is literally a labor of love. Like I, 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 I've pushed through so many times on every episode um, to get it done because there are people that enjoy watching my episodes and my videos, and I appreciate you. I really do. I appreciate and love all of you. Um, and I do that um, for you. And I do it as a way of me still being creative, not only with my recipes, but then with uh, making the videos. So um, it's a way of me kind of contributing in a way that I didn't think I could anymore. And there are some days where I don't think I can do it anymore just because of how um, just exhausting it is. 
for me. Um, but um, I've been told many times I hide that very well. Um, and in, in my mind, it's either I, um, I just let it overtake me or I do the best I can with it. And sometimes it overtakes me, other times I push through. Um, so, uh, like I mentioned, um, I, I've been diagnosed with uh, severe depression. Um, I've been on a, a lot of medication recently um, for that. Um, I've gone to speak to um, a therapist. I've spoken to a psychiatrist. Um, and honestly, um, none of it's really helped. Um, the thing that I find that helps the most is talking. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> okay, Echo. Um, but it's hard to... It's hard to uh, kind of find the words to describe what I what I'm feeling, um, what I see in my head, the voices, the things that I hear in my head. It's really weird to describe. Um, there's just times where something just kind of kind of envelops me, and I can't control it. Um, Growing up, like I mentioned, I played a lot of sports. I was, you know, um, physically strong, and, and I've always been physically strong and mentally strong. Um, but my physical side has, has kind of diminished because I haven't been able to do the things that I used to um, physically. But my mental side is what's gotten me through the six surgeries, <sighs> dozens of epidural injections into my spine, numerous different medications and things like that. Um, my mental, my mental strength has gotten me through that, but I find it after 12 years, six surgeries, all that other stuff, a possible seventh surgery on the horizon. Um, it's waning like, uh, real bad, real bad. Um, there are days where I just, I can't find, I can't find the mental strength to, to do certain things anymore. Um, and it's been difficult. It's been real difficult. Um, I've, I've cut out a lot of the um, things that aren't super, super necessary uh, that take a lot out of me. Um, um, and unfortunately, one of those things that have suffered has been the show. Um, it's just difficult for me, for me to do some days. Um, but part of me wants to, there's a little part of me inside that is like, don't give up on that, you know, keep reaching for that. Keep, keep trying. And I'm not letting go of that little piece of me that wants, wants me to feel normal, wants me to feel like a human. Because really, the vast majority of my days, I don't. Um, just about a month ago, I was taking 20 different pills a day. 20 pills a day. Every day. Did anything change? I don't think so. Um... I, I would I would I would even argue that it got worse. Um, things got worse because those medications caused side effects, and the only way to combat those side effects were to take more medications. 
and it's like, really? <laughs> um, I currently take pain medicine once a day, sometimes a couple times, just depending on what, what, what we're doing in the day. But once a day after I make dinner um, and clean up and stuff so I could have some time with Mickey and Emma. And I thought that was a lot, like taking pain medicine to kind of feel human. But after taking 20 pills a day and it not helping, um, talking to therapists and psych psychiatrists and it not helping, um, I'm kind of, I don't know what to do next. So I stopped taking some of the medication. Um, I decided not to continue my my meetings with the therapist and the psychiatrist. And the reason being um, the one, well, the major thing I was worried about talking to the therapist and the psychiatrist was the fact that they would kind of talk down to me because I'm the one that has this problem and I'm coming to them for help. And they're up here talking down like, oh, okay. And, and literally <laughs> the, the, like, they would talk to me, oh, okay, oh, okay, okay, yeah, oh, uh-huh, and, like, to me, it's so demeaning to talk to somebody like that, like, and it's one thing, like, if you're processing what somebody's saying, and they both would, you know, were writing, you know, both the therapist and the psychiatrist, writing, like, a book, about the things that I were saying, like bringing up these things inside of me that I thought I had put to bed. Um, and that was hard too, was bringing those things back up um, and talking about it. But the har harder than that was subsequent meetings with them. I'd have to remind them of things. So it was kind of like reopening, like pulling the scab off again you know, every time. And it was like, what was the point of you taking all those notes and writing and writing things down about me if you can't refer to the notes or you don't remember the things we talked about? Um, and that was, those were the two main things was being talked down to and not really being heard for what I was saying and having to bring, bring up the bring up these old wounds that I thought that I had taken care of. Um, so I decided not to do that, but I'm the kind of person that feels better when I let things off my chest. I can't bottle things up. I can't, I can't bottle them up and, and push them down. I can't do that. Um, I'll, I'll just like explode. Any of you that that know me personally knows that I just talk like I I mean, even those of you that know me through my videos, like you see that I just constantly talk. <laughs> that's who I am. Um, and that's how I find um, relief is is through conversation. And I really thought speaking to, to a professional would help. It didn't. Um, and, and it's been hard, but again, it's, it's, ha it's hard to kind of verbalize what I've been feeling. Um, the best, like I said, is, is to kind of, conf kind of, kind of, uh, compare it to being enveloped by something or having like a veil put over you and you can't take it off or you can't escape it. Like you have to either write, write it out or let it overtake you. Um, and there's been times where I've been very close to letting it overtake me completely, but, um, that hasn't happened, um, yet. That hasn't happened. Um, but I don't know how much longer I could, I could fend it off. Um, you know, and there might be people thinking, well, you know, um, try to try to be optimistic, you know, find positive things. And I do. 
I do. I, I have an amazing family. Um, I have an amazing wife. I have my amazing daughter. Like, you know, things could be so much worse. A hundred percent, you're right. But there's just something that is preventing me from finding joy in things that I used to. Um, and it's, it's like, it's not even me. Like, it's not me. I always tell people, like, there's only one thing in the entire world that that you have 100% control over. And that's yourself. That's you. You control yourself. You know, um, in the end of the day, somebody might be egging you on to say something or to do something. But in the end of the day, it's up to you. You choose that. And I pride myself on having control of my myself physically and mentally but again like I mentioned like physically I I can't there's things physically I can't I've tried to run I can't I physically can't like my spine is fused my legs don't work that way my body doesn't physically work that way I could tell myself all day run but I can't and it's, it's hard, it's hard to hear you can't do something. And I've always prided myself as well. When somebody tells me you can't do something, I pride myself on proving them wrong and, and showing them I can. But there are things that I can't do physically. And that's when I need my, my mental strength to get through it. But Again, as hard as I will myself to, to do certain things, I, I can't. I can't do it. There's just things I can't do. And that's, that's, that's been hard to wrap my head around. But I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, there's days where it's physically almost impossible for me to get out of bed. And I say almost impossible because I get out of bed. And the reason I get out of bed is Emma. Um, she's my ace. I don't know what I would do without her. She's my best friend. I see so much of myself in her. Um, like how I was when I was a kid. And even how I am now sometimes. Um, it's, it's, it's a trip to see that. And... Um, it's been hard to, to see her react to when I'm not myself. Um, because she knows when I'm in pain. She knows everything about me. If I stub my toe, she'll be like, Daddy, are you okay? And she'll run over and she'll be like, I'll kiss it for you. Um, if I drop something on the floor, she runs over to pick it up. Like, she helps me so much. Um, but every day she asks me, Daddy, is your back hurting today? Like, she knows. Um, and that's the hardest thing, um, is that she knows. Like, she understands that something's not right. And... I don't, I don't want her to know that something's not right. She's a kid. She, she should be running around, having fun, playing. She shouldn't be worrying about her dad. But my kid worries about me. And she... She, um, she, um, I, I just, I know, um, she, she, she needs her dad. She needs me. She needs uh, her dad.
so I fight for her. More than anything else. So I urge you, if you need someone to talk to, please reach out, talk to somebody. There'll be days where you feel like you're alone, but reach out. Even when you don't think you can talk or somebody's not going to understand what you're going through, try. Just try. Because the worst feeling in the world is thinking that you are by yourself, even though you're surrounded by people that love you. And if you're somebody that knows somebody that is dealing with mental illness, like please try for them. They, they, it might be difficult to, to have a conversation with them or to do things with them, but don't give up, like help be there for them, help them just be there. Just listen. If they're willing to talk, talk. If they're not, just be there, hold them. Reassure them that you're there for them. It goes so far, I promise you. All, all of you that have, have reached out to me to say, when are the new episodes of Edible Ed coming out? You have no idea how much that means to me that you enjoy the, my creation. You enjoy the art that I put out there. It goes so far. And when I tell you at the end of the videos or at the end of my recipes that I appreciate you, I love you, like I mean it. All of you that actually take the time to watch my videos and share my videos, it means the world to me. And all of you that are my friends, it means the world to me. But I urge you, please, if you're somebody that needs help, reach out reach out and if you're somebody that knows somebody that needs help be there for them that's all i can say thanks for listening to me i appreciate it and i'll see you real soon love you bye